Uh, hello everyone welcome to the latest episode of top top so in this episode we have with us anjali khanna anjali has over 30 years of experience across it hr outsourcing media publication and education currently she is the head of hr at step by step school in noida and she manages the full employee life cycle from talent acquisition to retention and separation she advocates the integrate that integrating ai chatbots and data analytics in hr while also emphasizing the importance of bridging the gap between employees and employers anjali has conducted workshops on recruitment team building diversity and inclusion and more for both corporates and educational institutions she has also received the 101 top hr minds award for the world hrd congress in 2019 and has also been certified hr auditor and analytics expert from iim ahmedabad emotional intelligence practitioner and trainer and facilitator from carlton advanced management institution usa she is also a lifetime member of national hrd network and shrm a very warm welcome to you anjali uh we hope we do justice to the interview today by interviewing you sure. you have such a huge span of experience thank you so much thank you so much for a very nice welcome and uh, thank you so much for being me over i hope that i am able to do justice to uh, and answer the issue, the questions that are really integral to the to the session thank I, you i am sure you would so before we dive right in like we both of us know that how the hr space is changing like even as we speak and how it has evolved over the years so what has been your approach to performance management evolution that has taken over the years how have you evolved and what have you seen in the space that you think you can share with us so uh, dipanita i started my professional journey in an it setup mm-hmm. and we called ourselves a very progressive organization then uh, we were uh, we were a public sector undertaking but did a brilliant job because we took over the ibm from when they were leaving mm-hmm. the country uh, so we took over all the ibm business the employees that's how i'm talking of the year 1978 mm-hmm. um when this happened of course i was not working at that time mm-hmm. uh, so um and i have seen uh, despite the fact that i was in the technology setup and there was one line which i learned when i started working that good good or bad thing about technology is that what is invention today is obsolete tomorrow True. so it continues but then in today's world what i think is that that is the truth about everything and anything in life true right so i have when we talk about the performance management how it has evolved i think uh, in the last 30 32 years i started working in 91 that was a time when i used to perpetually chase people to do performance evaluation for people you know okay. and the answer that i used to get was abhi to mera hi nahi hua so if my management has not done mine how can i do for others and this typically exhibited the top down approach which was there mm-hmm. so doing performance management or performance review for your team member was a very uh, high handed thing you know that that, that attitude of one up you know mm-hmm. and from there today we are talking of a partnership so when i talk to the candidates today when i am interviewing them i tell them that when you are sitting across the interview uh, sit with this thought process that this person sitting across needs you as much as you need the job if not more right so you are as important as the person who is interviewing you he is also answerable to people why he has not been able to close the position so i think that's the kind of circle we are talking about so going back to the fact that in the early 90s the appraisal we used to call it appraisal mm-hmm. used to was looked at uh, as an as an only the reason why we are giving feedback or why do we are doing this formality of performance review is because we want to give salary hikes to people mm-hmm. so in this whole process the the feedback system was severely delayed i remember we used to have cases where people were not appraised for 2 years for 1 and a half year 2 and a half year 
factors. From there, next we moved to something called competency-based system of performance management, right? Mm -hmm. Where the feedback was given on the skills and behavior of the person that was needed for the job vis vis what the person really had. Mm -hmm. So focus was sh shifted from the results to the skills needed to achieve the result, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there also, uh, something which cropped up was the fact that the, we were still governed by this personal biases which we carried about each other. So, and it was always the same at the receiver's end as well as at the giver's end. And that is the reason the, we introduced something called 360 degree feedback system, mm -hmm. where you were not being given a feedback just by one person. Mm -hmm. Of course, traditional system also had an appraiser and a reviewer. Okay. But then we came up with 360 degree feedback where you were being evaluated by your team member, by your boss, by your by your super boss, then by your customer and by the support function, which was also so within the organization a lot. Your peer level review was also there. This actually killed the possibility of biases because then on the basis of this, an overall picture would come up about how the person is. And, and it, it also brought in a lot of clarity on where do you see this person gradually growing. True. But then again, the challenge with all these three was the fact that this was largely something which was confined to once a year. And it was done again more as a ritual. That spirit to give feedback, to, to receive feedback was there, but then it was really lacking. All right. And I think uh, first time I came across a, a process where it could, uh, there was a continuous feedback process or continuous performance management was when I saw uh, it with a friend of mine who was working for IBM. Mm -hmm. So at the end of every project, there is a mechanism of giving it back to the person before he or she moves to the next one. So this is called something like regular check-in and real-time feedback being given to the people. Mm -hmm. Now, what really played a major role in this was the use of technology. Because the technology would give those alarms, the alerts every now and then. And if you are driven by a setup which is technology-driven, you can't move to the next top, next project till such time there is a feedback available. And I think this played a really brilliant role in evolving the performance evaluation system. Again, this, for some people, it still continued to be more of a ritual, a process, tick mark. And I think uh, in the last couple of years, we also saw that we were now talking of future-driven appraisals or right. review mechanisms or feedback systems, where you're not only just give it back to an to a person for what he or she has done in the past, but also looking at how are you how are you relating this person to the future, the life skills or the soft skills as we call them call it have become more important. We are talking of not just the hard skills but the soft skills. So you may be a teacher, you may be an engineer, you may be whatever. But how you how good are you with your flexibility, with your adaptability, with performance, uh, with your uh, problem solving skill? How are you adjusting well to the organization? How are you keeping yourself engaged? What is your desire to continuously learn and also adapt yourself to the goals of the organization? Naturally? So this that we are right now in that phase where largely we are talking of this, and which has now. What has what has come more is like I started saying that we are today at a stage where we are talking about partnership. So the employee feedback is as important to an employee as it is to the employer, right? So what happens in that situation is that while the the manager is giving a feedback to the employee, there is also a feedback which or a or a feedback of the organization on the whole, which comes from the employee, mm -hmm. where he or she talks about their own burnout issues, their mm -hmm. work-life balance, their desire to grow, their desire to excel and learn further. So today, 
it's more on the personalized strength of every individual including the person who is reviewing and the person who is being reviewed and the organization hmm. right so i i think that but then we are and we are we are human beings we'll continue to evolve and i'm sure there will be much more things which will keep coming uh and i'm i'm glad with that our generation is able to see that growth from where we were where we did not even talk of appraisals where we did not even talk of review mechanisms the feedback to where we are where there is a continuous feedback mechanism and i i really appreciate technology intervention in this yes Great. So I hope I have answered it well. Yeah, yeah, greatly you have captured. I think all the points, Anjali, that uh, that is should be the primary focus and has become the primary focus now. Which you mentioned one of the things which, uh, is very important is the partnership. Like partnering yeah. with the employee is so much important rather than just giving them feedback, but taking yes. their feedback is. like as much important as giving them feedback because yes. the entire backbone of any company stands on the performance of the employees right so their of course their uh, opinions are so important so uh, this uh, comes to uh, this brings me to my next question so we have heard a lot about how important it is to keep the employees engaged to have a good employee engagement practice in place but what we often time miss out on is how are we are we measuring the impact of the employee engagement that is taking place what metrics or what are we using to determine whether an employee engagement initiative or the employee continuous employee engagement that we are doing is on the right track so from your experience what metrics do you think Uh, or have you used that determines that okay this employee engagement initiative or what we are doing is on track and is helping is actually helping is and it's not just a formality that we are doing for the sake of uh, employee engagement sure so i think uh, like we were talking about a feedback mechanism employee engagement also has the the whole definition of employee engagement today has completely changed so in the name of again going back to the time when i started in the name of employee engagement we used to only talk of cake cuttings and you know how the hr functions were made fun of right uh, today uh, employee engagement is a very different definition in itself mm. so to be, to begin with one needs to understand what exactly is employee engagement so i learned about it from someone when many years back uh, one of my first bosses who explained it to me saying that how do you identify that an employee is engaged mm. within the organization is he or she really proud of working in the organization is there a happiness quotient now how do you find there is a happiness quotient now these are the definitions these are the things which have not changed over a period of time i would say so how would you identify that there is an engagement level is really good in within the organization is that is the employee aware of what is happening in the organization now let's talk about the organizations very big big organizations uh, the ibms and accentures or googles of the world how many of them really know that how many offices do they have a very simple question and how do you that is the reason why i asked how why would you feel engaged is when you take pride and how will you take pride when you know all right my organization has achieved this all right i'll give you an example from my school most of us are very proud of the fact that we are considered to be the best school in the country that is when we do not apply for any ranking systems at all our school you will not see any step by step ad anywhere anywhere we are not very active on social media so because our founders very clearly said that our focus is children and our people these are the only two things that we will focus on so we are not really in in that game of propagating or or talk, talking about 
or using social media of course i don't say it is wrong it is it is the right approach as the need is but then our school has never done this all right but then still we continue to be the most sought after school for for the students as well as for the teachers now that is because our teachers take a lot of pride in what they do and there is a continuous progress and productivity which keeps increasing when i say now in a from a school perspective what is progress and what is productivity is not always the school results not the 10th standard result or not the 12th standard result so we are not manufacturing a product that we can very easily define how much is the sale and we can define that all right we are growing the progress and productivity of for us is how many of our students are really rising above the expectations of the world and growing right and not just professionally they are growing as human beings as as what they want to do are they able to achieve what they want to do? so in any other organization from a standpoint of a very well, let's say a manufacturing setup that's the other business my school is in so how do they define how are, how are they their top levels and the high, the bottom line or the top line improving right what is the active response of the people in involving themselves in a reward and recognition system so one is that i have introduced a system there is a reward scheme there is a recognition scheme but is there a zeal a desire in people to really participate in them to achieve them and to be excited about receiving them okay. right so many people your many organizations what they do is that they come up with those systems of employee of the month or employee of the week whatever and i have i'm supposed to wear a cap or something for the whole week or for the whole month now that has become a very ceremonial thing hua hua chalo let's move on mm. yeah so that excitement that joy do people really have that joy of being participating are they really wanting to compete with themselves forget about competing with others are they competing with themselves is there a need to continuously grow and how will that come that how will you identify that not just participating but also wanting to learn more and more do there is, is there an appetite to continuously learn for their their own development are they talking about their development also as much as they are talking about their own uh, the people's uh, the organization's development mm -hmm. and as a team are are their collaborations are there are they do, do we know that all oh, right i know this this technology is my forte but for my current project i also need someone to be uh, good with an with a wide technology do i know of people within the organization who are available to do this or do i know the right place to find out or right people to seek help for from this mm. within the organization or then outside and there is also a very strong bonding between the manager and the team now when i say bonding i don't say bonding in terms of going for their chai and suta breaks i'm also talking about the fact that when they are working on the project do you see the manager who has taken the or who has been given the responsibility the target of achieving an x result mm -hmm. is looking at sulk sitting there sulking ab ye kaam kaun karega or he knows she knows for sure that i have a very strong team to to support me and i have an extended team in the whole organization who is there to support and i have xyz to do it mm -hmm. and are people continuously wanting to try and innovate ways to find solutions to the problem mm -hmm. right today we are talking in in a for example in a school setup we talk about project based learning all right so it's not like the, you are studying english or you are studying math so you are studying science so today there are the learning in the schools also is happening which is cross subject teaching so you are given a project where x activity will be supported by your english teacher y will be supported by your maths teacher or by your science teacher or your uh, social sciences teacher or your music teacher for that matter or or your uh, sports teachers the physical education teachers so why are these projects created the way they are so that people can learn to work in collaboration so is there that innovativeness creativity which the teachers are using today to create something like this if the school is is able to see that happily if the 
organization is able to see such things happily happening in the school then i think your engagement initiatives are very very successful and most importantly i think which i have been saying from from the from many years in fact that if your when i started working i will just take a minute to explain this uh when i started working uh people used to come and ask me how's life and i would always say could not be better and why did i say that because when we were in cmc that's the organization i worked in mm-hmm. uh we were at the second floor and our office used to start at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, while the school uh, while the organization kept saying that you have to be there in time and we will all those typical things about late marks etc etc the but it never happened in cmc never happened practically never happened but the zeal what i would always see was that at 9 o'clock you would see people running up the stairs not waiting for their lift just because they wanted to be there in the office by 9 o'clock and attend the very first 5 minute quick meeting with the general manager who would never pointed out that you're late never but all that he did was he would stand up on his uh, on his uh, on his table he would get up we had an open office and he would announce all right guys can we all collect together and it was a huge hall where he could be heard by everyone mm-hmm. okay can we all come for a catch up and that 5 10 minute meeting was something which everybody looked forward to right so i think that is what is very important today we may talk about work so i'm what i mean is that are you seeing that spirit in people to to your or works and and be excited about it of course are there there are so hence there there are no burnouts there are no people coming about and saying i am tired i am all the time saying i am tired and not i think if these things are taken care of and if you are not seeing such signs or you are seeing all these things positively happening i think you have accomplished what you wanted to yep that's a, that's a great definition of employee engagement matrix i think never talked about uh actually being happy and looking forward to going to work and not feeling that not taking it as a burden like you mentioned it's so so important as a matrix of employee engagement that is how we understand that the employees truly engaged in the organization yes. they are in yes great. great great uh, example anjali i think our audiences will also appreciate how simply you explained it to them a very difficult concept of measuring employee engagement so while we are uh, while we also talked a uh, little about feedback how it's very important you know but uh, there are a, and you do did mention some of the challenges that f- feedback entails like when we are because many of them consider it just as uh, a formality of giving feedback so uh, if we consider that how would you recommend overcoming this common challenges that even today when we have evolved and taken feedback as something as an integral part of an organization still there are challenges that the organization face in feedback giving and feedback receiving so how would you uh, recommend uh, some steps or some tips on overcoming those challenges for the organizations so uh, dipanita what i would say to this is uh, i know it might just sound a little cliche but we should always say thank you i have a difficulty now i'll work on a solution so uh, first of all we need to understand over here that what are the challenges uh, that are there now referring to the first one or whatever we have discussed till now we have to also understand that the work environment today Uh, while i am talking about competing with myself but i can't deny the fact that we are working in a very competitive world mm. we we are competing uh, i can't say that all right forget about what what the others are doing just do at your pace it doesn't help because you are learning from them if nothing gets right? done so we are uh, we are constantly working against the time 
and that is one of the very major factor which hampers the feedback we are not when we are not able to provide it in time the very effect that we are looking at of that feedback somewhere is diluted i may not say i won't say it is completely lost but it is definitely diluted in the process and you can't deny the fact that if i am a manager today mm. to you i am somebody else is there up there in the hierarchy who's answer, seeking answers from me and then he's being asked by someone else right now we are all constantly under the pressure of satisfying the person who's who's questioning me simultaneously to that client who's waiting outside for who will anyways throw up if if i don't solve the problem so this whole process of giving timely feedback like i said in the beginning uh, that even if we are doing it at the end of the project the technology forces us to do it in time yes because then you can't release the person from the from the said project and your your technology can only support you as much as you make it support so garbage in and garbage out is what i'm referring to so if, so this is one support that takes care of the timeliness of the technology definitely takes care of the timeliness now the second major issue that comes up is the fact that there are a lot of bias which we, which is still governing us all the time and we can't overlook the fact that i am at times however much i may try i'm a human being and i at times get carried away by the personal bias i have against my team or in favor of my team right at times i might be prejudiced about what i am thinking and what i am i may just continue to overlook these things also one particular thing which governs the managers is the fact that i have to get my work done from this guy so beyond a point beyond a level i cannot give the give the negative feedback to the person and one more thing which very strongly um, you know affects is the fact that when we are giving the feedback there is a thought that that bias is there from both the both the sides so the moment i give you a feedback as your manager you also have that feeling oh she's she's still governed by what happened there oh she is against the the team, female members in the group or she doesn't understand people who come from electronic setup i am um, i am from electronic and she is looking at software computer science people or she has that bias for um, as an hr head for people who are doing recruitment she does not care for the non uh, you know hiring stuff and all that so so when you are giving feedback the solution to this is are you specifically talking about this this situation this was your behavior and this was the impact very very specific mm-hmm. we call it an sbi con sbi process so is situation this was the situation this was your behavior or this was your response to this and this was the impact we would have either on the students or on the on the parents or on the on the customer whoever your customer is now when you are very very specific in giving the feedback and receiving the feedback that way then that bias issues also will be taken care of now a lot of time there is a we have developed a culture where um, over a period of time where we see feedback only as a neg- negative feedback so when you call a member of in your team and say i have a feedback for you the first reaction is oh my god what what wrong have i done many a times so so we we do not even see the fact that feedback could be a positive feedback also so when you get when your order is received good from the swiggies or from the zomatos of the world they don't ask you they ask you for a feedback right mm-hmm. now giving feedback doesn't mean that you have to rate them on 1 2 3 4 5 only you can rate them on 9 10 also so i bought a car some years back and the organize the the company called me for the feedback and i said i would rate you 9 on 10 my experience was pretty good uh and uh, and i i had a nice feeling of buying the car 
so the first 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 question that lady asked me was ma'am why have you not rated us 10 on 10 where do where did we lack and my answer to her was i am surprised that you are not even thinking of the nine good things that i am going to i'm thinking about you are only worried about that one good thing one thing which you have not done well now that one thing could be you ask me what was your experience overall experience i have told you nine the possibly that one experience is what i felt with myself it's not with you at all mm -hmm. so why are we only thinking of feedback as something which is negative and that happens in both the situations when i joined uh, step by step i was interacting with one of head of the schools and she said oh yes i i know there is a problem with this teacher we were talking about a teacher and i said something to her isko feedback dena padega i said are you not giving her a feedback till now at all she was no she was working fine but working fine does not mean that you don't give feedback to someone at all so is the person really looking forward to and and there have been those a lot of uh, articles have been written about giving feedback like a sandwich you start with something nice and then you give the the negative or the areas of improvement and then you top it up with a dessert you know the best mm -hmm. thing that okay overall these are the good things so if you are giving a feedback or receiving a feedback with that attitude i don't see any reason that anyone will avoid giving feedback so the perspective has to be that feedback could be positive also and then the and then the feedback should not be governed by how i think all right so if i give feedback to my team member or if i am receiving feedback from my boss and she is just shouting and saying things which which are there okay but not really re it starts reflecting in my mind about what this person feels whereas as a, as the middle man or middle woman in between the organization and the employee your constant role is to connect the employee with the organization's goals we all work for a common motive right many in body one in mind or whatever you want to name it and if that motive is not achieved in the feedback then then the whole essence is lost now why do people not take feedback seriously is also because there is no follow up after that so dipanita i find that your calculation issues are getting a little too much so let us work on this mechanism let's do this use this part of excel which can help you with your calculation errors we will sit on it every wednesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon i am i am i am telling my secretary to make sure that you are but then next wednesday something else came up and for this i think i am in love with google calendars or your phone calendars because at least they remind you in time that all right you have to give a feedback to your or you have to follow up with people the whole mechanism of not following up is like what your parents did with us while we were growing up or what we do with our children i will make sure that you study every day and i will do this but then we never follow up we never come back from work in time forget about asking our children what they have done what they have not done during the day so the whole essence is to be to follow up regularly with with a lot of desire to help the person grow and last but not the least is the fact that we have all today become uh, because of the cultural uh, you know uh, alignment that is happening globally mm -hmm. so you may be from calcutta sitting in delhi i may be from delhi sitting in mumbai or or whatever within india and of course there is there are people who are sitting globally in us or uk or whatever so there is a lot of cultural tolerance that is needed in this by the person giving the feedback and by the person who is receiving the feedback. i may have ha have a style of speaking for example because i come from an x part of the world the person receiving the feedback should be open to that it is not that uh, you know they should perceive me as rude i am a punjabi so i have a tendency to be a little loud i have the tendency and and i am very proud of it 
even if you make me stand for a session i don't like using the mic because i feel that are yaar main to punjabi hu i am always loud and clear so that tolerance toward those things or cultural thoughts may this may not be true what i just gave you the example not true with everyone but that is my perception about myself or my my community all right so the person who is receiving feedback from me should be open to that and so should i be taking feed taking that reply i should also be conscious about the fact that this girl sitting across is just a 23 year old she's just started working she's staying away from her family she is this is her first job am i being empathetic enough towards her to understand her situation if today i just give her a uh, that that okay i will sit with that mindset that i will give her my peace of mind today she's good she's messed up with this candidate or whatever i would have done my job after that what so if i don't understand that this what is the situation of the person who's receiving the feedback you know then the whole idea of giving feedback is lost so this whole this whole thing about inclusivity and and you know uh, uh your uh, uh, what your being culturally uh, aligned with each other i i love all these things But like i said the the new age things at times make me feel that oh my god i would have it would have been even better if i had started to work right now and i'm enjoying the learning thoroughly and i think these things are making a lot of difference um in acceptability and reducing the barrier between the manager and the and then yeah very true very true i think the point that you mentioned about feedback being subconsciously perceived as negative is so uh, true because whenever we think that someone is going to give us feedback automatically our mind goes there okay now we are going it's to it's an instant thing the moment somebody tells you i have to give you a feedback oh maine kya galat kar true very true because uh, i think positive feedback is not as appreciated and talked about as critical or negative feedback are but it's very important that we talk more about positive feedback because it gives the encouragement and the motivation to the employees to go forward and you know achieve that extra that they that the organization always push them to achieve yeah. Yeah. very uh, very well put anjali and very well bringing it forward so now that we were talking about feedback and also how the change has taken place in the performance management space and we have seen a shift in performance management from mere annual reviews to making it more continuous like you were saying so what one of the uh, benefits like you talked about is uh, we engage more with the management so what do you think are the other benefits that these regular check ins and feedback has over just simply annual reviews and how do you see it further evolving in the future and what is your take on it so i very strongly feel that uh, first of all i think most of it we have already discussed Mm-hmm. but uh, still to to put this uh, to answer this in a little more detail one good thing about this is that con- considering that this is an ongoing process mm-hmm. right uh, it is uh, it is immediate in nature so uh, they say that you should strike the iron when it is hot true i would say that at least if not hot because jab wo hot hoga to then your attitude to react will also be hot right True. but then at least make sure that you are striking it when it is warm enough to accept the feedback now what happens is that something you wrote in, in the traditional systems mm. you know the biggest problem was the fact that your annual feedback will happen only once a year mm. and when i am giving you that feedback when i am sitting for that review you started in the month of let's say april to march right mm. so you started with your goal setting everything was done and you started performing with the new aligned goals whatever was given to you first of all they would remain largely remain static forever right but then if there was something remarkable that you did 
in the month of June, July. And there was no mechanism of recording it or giving it, encouraging you or telling you at that time that, yeah, Dipanita, you did a brilliant job in this. It would somewhere have probably been washed off by the other project you did, which did not do as well as the first one did. So when I sat down to do your review in the month of February, March, I was only, only governed by what was the recent incident. Right. So, and I only focused on what happened now. And you tried reminding me that Anjali, no, look, I did something well in the month of June. I don't remember. Right now, this goof up that has happened in the month of January or December is so fresh in my mind that I have partially forget forgotten it. Yes. And all my feedback to you will be governed by this one. Mm. I will forget about talking about what else has been happening. Right. So, so this regular check-ins that you call it plays a very important role in ensuring that you are given the feedback at the right time, mm. which helps you grow further. Right. And then it is continuously aligned with the goals of the organization. Now, we were a computer maintenance organization. We managed computers at that time. So there was an infrastructure team and there was a software development team. And mostly they were aligned to whatever the typical projects that we were doing from other largely recovered government projects. Right? Today, the situation is very different. Mm. There is a constant realignment of the goals of the organization also. You look at the organizations which have been there for from ever, all right, 100 years to and they have also evolved greatly. So the, there is, the goals have changed and there is a change every day, every regular, if not every day. Mm -hmm. So if you are not giving that continuous feedback, if you are not, you are not continuously aligning yourself with the organization. Mm -hmm. So I am supposed to work on in an X mode right now. Now this project is over. Now you're moving to the next one and you have to move to the Y mode. Right? And if we don't do that regularly, I will continue to work like this. True. There is no change in my working style at all. So there is no correlation between what you were required to do and what you are doing now. And the most important thing with this regular check-in that happens is that like I was when we were talking about employee engagement, the employee is constantly on her toes, mm -hmm. wanting to work more and more. There is a regular discussion, there is a regular meeting, there is a daily catch-up, right? Which which is giving you instant answers to your challenges, to your queries, your feedback. And the employee is excited all the time to work, right? And most importantly, this aspect of including, looking at the employee and finding out that, okay, I think she needs a break, right? The employee is, there is, there is an anxiousness, there is a lot of stress in her mind because of the work that I have put on her. So let me see how I support her, all right? And then most important thing is that, Am I, when I'm giving, moving this person from a project A to project B, am I also ensuring that she is ready for that kind of a project? Have I developed her? So today when we regularly engage, one thing that happens is that there is a regular forecast of what we are going to do next. Not just next. You're not just talking about, okay, I will finish with this uh, semester and move to the next semester. If Instead, to talk about, all right, as an organization, we are right now a CBSC school. In the next two years, we want to introduce IB. And this mm. is the preparedness we have to do. So let us pick up these five teachers or these 20 teachers whom in the next two years, we will groom them to be good IB teachers. Right? Uh, all right, I have, a, I have a vice principal who's on the verge of retirement. And I have these three resources whom I can think of grooming for the next two years within next two years to take up these assignments. Mm -hmm. So so this is the agility with which cut, 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 you have to work now, right? Mm -hmm. You don't give that feedback regularly to the employee. Then you will come across 
a person who is not really accountable and is not taking ownership of his or her own progress and that of the organization. So by continuously connecting with our people, we are also ensuring that there is an increased accountability. You know, these terms have become a, a very regular language in our culture. Mm -hmm. Am I standing up and owning the mistake? Right. Right. And today, one can see that there is not much hesitation in an employee accepting that, yes, this is where I want to. And I think this is the beauty of the regular check-in and the assurance because of which the employee that that employee gets because of this that yes if i have if i have created a mis if i have done a mistake if i have created something which is not acceptable i have the support internally to rectify this right, right? and also the fact that we are working in a data driven culture true so when we are using regular check ins thanks to the uh, artificial intelligence which is overpowering many things today the the data of the the speed with which it processes the data is remarkable so because you're doing regular check-ins and you have the data handy with you you can talk about the immediate feedback you can talk about areas of improvement and you can develop a growth mindset in the employee which is true. very very important yeah true very true uh, so, Anjali, I think you perfectly summed up the importance of check-ins in today's culture and how it helps an organization. Uh, just because one of the things that you talk about, how the support the employee receives when they mess up something, when we do regular check-ins to get that validation that, okay, I have done a mistake, which I think many of us fear making mistake because of this. Like, how will we be blamed because of the mistake that we are going, that we have made, instead of making sure that we do not make that mistake further or we are receiving the support to rectify it. I think what you summed up in the regular check-ins and all the data that we have and we talk about it uh, when it is happening is so, so important so that this does not get repeated in the future. So very well put. So Anjali, also we have seen from your, uh, we know that you are a very uh, AI enthusiast person. You are very into the use and uh, knowledge of the artificial intelligence. So AI is also becoming an integral part of how we see performance now, performance, man how we manage the employees. So how do you foresee the role of, of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the performance management practices in the near future? How do you think it will be integrated further into the systems? So first of all, let me just, just give you a, a, correct you a bit over here. Yeah. I am, I won't call myself an uh, AI enthusiast as much as I'm intrigued or I'm I'm excited to know what happens over there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yes, uh, AI has actually very subtly just taken over a lot of things that we were, uh, I would want to put the word wasting. First of all. With AI coming in, a lot of our routine jobs, yeah, uh, with thanks to the brains behind AI, lot of things which we were doing, uh, racking our minds doing, AI does it like this. And the most important thing in that is the data, data processing. Mm -hmm. So AI can helps us manage large number, a large amount of data within us. And one best part about AI is that you are a huge organization with 20, 30,000 people. And the use of AI helps you create one single docket of this individual where you can actually collect the whole journey of this individual in one place and tell the person, look how beautifully you have. Right? You were here when you started. You did not know how to do these, these, these things. And look, so much you have learned. But then there are there are still two, three, four things which have come up over a period of time which we still learn. And this is where you are capable of going. 
right this if i tell you you may not agree with me but now i have a data to support with the vanita in the last 5 years these are the clients you have managed and this is the kind of uh, feedback that i have got from them and these are your such see these are your strengths let us work on this right but before this okay we i did have something which was there in the in some excel sheet in some file so now this enhanced objectivity that i have in on tape on on the screen in the system has reduced the biases that we both work with together, right now because that biases are not there and the, why are they not there because the algorithms that ai and machine learning uses as the instant dances it is all black and white there are no grays over here whereas i still say that hr function itself cannot have a black and white hmm. yeah but then still they are able to predict that where does where do i take how do i do my talent management how do i how do i grow my people this is where we are today and this is where we have to be in the next 10 years and these are the people who can contribute readily right now these are the people whom i can groom for the next 5 years these are the people who may not be able to catch up so i have to look for an alternate work for them within the organization or whatever today the use of ai tells me which are my support systems within the organization i have a new project for which my team is not ready but then i have people and at the click of a button i will have the list of all those people who are the masters of of various new technology words which i don't even know of right now hmm. right so i think that's the most uh, important thing that ai gives me i must speak about the human interaction of ai the the chatbots which are there they are helping us answer so many queries today organizations are using uh, these uh, you know these sparks and the uh, what uh, uh, the the umbers and uh, and other such things of the world the dishas of the world who are chatting with people and also been able to gauge by what you and me are talking right now the ai has the capacity to uh, translate this into data and give you an outcome which is so beautiful sure. so i i'm 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 all for ai for performance management because it is going to tell me as a manager where am i going wrong based on data not randomly it will tell me as a manager that look anjali khanna you have in the last 5 years appraised this 30 people and this is where your analysis have gone wrong you decided this for this person she was able to do something better than this or she was not you did not put this person in the right direction you forced this person to sit on behind the computer and work whereas this person was required to interact with people you know so this is what the ai tells me and i am able to take corrective actions because i am ai also forces me to check regularly the feedbacks which ai is giving me based on the data which is there in the system so that's the beauty of ai i think so hats off to whoever created all these things and uh, thanks to the microsofts and googles of the world for bringing all these things to us yeah very very true very i, I think intriguing point that you mentioned the interaction between ai and humans and how they can assist us in self correcting us like with the help of data so the so, first time actually i came across uh, one of such products which when which an organization has created i, I won't take the name uh how that organ that that particular ai thing had helped take the inputs from the employees about what their problems were right now mm -hmm. so without giving the names of the people ai based solution gave them the data of 
how people were feeling and what were the corrective measures that they could take i was really impressed with and and i think a lot of such products have come up in the market now and i think they are going to really contribute to the hr folks like us by giving us hr traditionally was not a data driven function was not really data driven was not a number driven thing but today i think even hr function in itself has evolved big time because of this performance management was more from the heart than from the mind you know true so so today it's a combination of a heart and mind it was more subjective not objectively done today we are able to do performance evaluation the management the feedback in a more objective way thanks to the technology true oh, very true yeah. i think i could not uh, like summarize it better than you did anjali uh, so with this with the last question we came to an end for our interview but each and every response and each and every experience you shared the example you shared i think is so important and it's so helpful for our audiences to learn from it so i really thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time thank out so and thank for so this much. interview thank you so much it's a pleasure uh, if it is help people uh, i'm i'm really uh, obliged i'm really happy to do it thank, thank you, you i'm so humbled much. thank, thank you, you so much anjali thanks a lot uh we see you in the next episode everyone thank you mm.